Hey, Jason from Bohemia Bees here. We are on our way to another cutout. Uh, we've got a bee removal that we have looked at a couple weeks back and just with our regular work schedule, uh, unable to get to it. So we took a, took a day off to work, but I guess that's what you gotta do when you gotta balance working uh, uh, bees and a full-time job. Anyway, so we're on the road to where the cutout is. It's not too far away. Um, they had bees swarm in uh, probably early spring. So this may be a young hive. Uh, it was a removal. They did a removal of their porch uh, off the back. It was an older porch. It left a cavity in the side of their house. And I think that just created a good, good opportunity for uh, the bees to find that perfect size cavity to move in. So, you know, we're going to take, go take a look at it. But just as this is another reason why um, when people see swarms of bees on a branch or a tree or a fence post, um, to call the call your local beekeeper, right? Have them try to get those bees out, uh, or not out, but off those trees and, and recover them, uh, that swarm of bees, uh, that cluster of bees, relocate it to their apiary where they can manage it. Uh, if they don't do that, uh, then those bees will find a home. They'll find a home in a cavity, uh, hopefully not in your house, but in this case they did. Uh, so we're gonna go and help this uh, client out to get it removed. So uh, let's take a look and see what we got when we get there. Okay, so we've arrived at the job site and you can see above me, behind me, there's bees going in and out of the back part of that where they've removed the porch. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get a heat signal, see if we can kind of locate where the majority of the hive is. Uh, and then we'll begin our cutting to get in this, to get to the actual colony. So uh, let's get a heat signal. Okay, so we can see the heat signal from the bees, but this is a two by, so it's hard to get it through it, but it's definitely cooler below it hot up there you can see the crack the heat they're creating between that crack so we're just hoping that they're there they're not all the way over there um, because we got a lot of heat that runs runs along the flashing but we see that the movement of the bees so we're going to take a look and we get inside and see where we're at okay so we've removed these two pieces of wood here uh they weren't as thick as i thought which is good but the hive is actually up inside a little cavity here you can see it um so we're gonna have to kind of finagle our way up in there without doing any more damage uh, or cut out. I'm hoping not have to remove some of this flashing or the siding, depending on how I can get to it, but we'll have to take a look once I get it up, uh, kind of start dissecting it. Let's uh, dig in. Okay, so you can see we've got, um, the nest goes back and up a little bit, and I think we can pull the comb out through here without having to, to rip out the, the next level to get to it. We're gonna try. Doesn't seem to be here for very long, so um, I think we're gonna be good. Let's uh, let's keep working. Okay, so when we set up our frames to uh, put the brood in, we put uh, rubber bands crossways on the back side, and then send some on the sides. So that as we lay the brood in, it creates a basket for to lay the, the actual comb in, and then we'll move the, the, uh, the rubber bands across to uh, help support it. Um, again, just a different technique that I've seen other uh, removal beekeepers, beekeepers that do removals do. So uh, it's a good technique. Okay, so we're almost done. We've got the uh, cavity cut out, as you can see. Uh, we'll get a good, quick look inside there. Uh, there's some bees that are hanging out still. Um, I still got the vac going, so I'm picking up those last few minute bees that are still just kind of hanging around. The foragers are still out, so there's not much you can do to get all of the foragers, but to get the majority of the bees, uh, that's what you want to do. So let me clean this cavity up, and then uh, we'll get it wiped down, and then uh, we'll take a look and see what we have. All right, so we've got it out of the, the cavity. We're gonna take them home and install them in a, in a, uh, in a box, a hive at home back in our apiary. Uh, there's still some foragers that are flying around and trying to figure out where they need to go next. Um, they'll still do that for maybe a day or two and then they'll, they'll either dissipate and go somewhere else, um, and find a new home. So um, here's the first stage in, uh, in the cutout removal here. <clears throat> and um, now back to the apiary for some more work. 
Okay, we're back in the apiary and we have got a setup here uh, to transfer over. We got the frames of brood in here that we're gonna, we're gonna put in the colony. We've got a setup with a bottom board. Um, we use slatted racks here, of course, naturally not everybody does, but we put that on. Uh, that'll get some good airflow because a lot of the, the brood is wet. You know, it might have some honey on it. So I wanna make sure that they can kind of naturally get a good airflow to clean up that hive, to clean up each other because some of the bees also are covered in honey. Uh, that's naturally part of the process when you're doing a cutout um, and you're collecting the bees up. So we're going to put the box from over here in the bee vac in the middle. We're going to set it on top of the bottom board and then we're going to set the, uh, the box, other box on top of it with the brood in it. And the bees will move up to, you know, attach to the brood and start to kind of get that cleaned up as well. Uh, and then we'll naturally uh, get it closed up and then let them be for a little bit. So let's get to work. Okay, so I'll probably get a lot of questions uh, in the comments about what BVAC is that? Where did I get it? This is a homemade BVAC. And I've liked this BVAC. I've used it for many years. Um, I'm getting ready to get a new BVAC that's a little more portable. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to that one or put that in the next video when you see that new BVAC. But this has been doing very well for me for the years. Um, it really is just a standard Colorado BVAC style in which there's a top with it. I've installed a shop vac uh, component in it. There's a honey gate for a valve to control the airflow. And underneath, it's got the, uh, you know, the holes to be able to pull it through. But I use a, if you notice here, you have all the bees up in there and there's a screened inner cover that keeps them up in there. So I'll remove that off and out of the way. And that way I can lift the box directly off the bottom. The dead bees are on the bottom. You'll see that in a second. And I'll be able to move this directly over to the, the colony. So let's go ahead and move it over. Okay, so you can see I haven't disturbed the bees that are in there. There's still a lot in there underneath that inner cover, that screened inner cover. And then in my box over here, there's a few bees that are down in there. They're dead just from the vacuuming process. Uh, we do always have some casualties. Um, I'm going to look through them to make sure I don't see the queen in there. I did not locate the queen in the cutout today. Hopefully I got her. But we do have a lot of bees over here. Um, so I'm hoping that she's in that cluster of bees in there. Or um, So we're, we're going to go ahead and now put the other box on top with the brood in it and let them move up. Okay, so we've got the uh, four frames of brood in the colony here, as you can see, framed up. We rubber band them in, um, and the bees will chew those rubber bands off. So um, that's not to worry about that. Um, there's some sticky bees up in here. There's some bees, but there's a lot of bees in the bottom, as you saw. They're going to move up now to the cover this brood up and then we'll condense the hive down to just 10 frames once they've sort of kind of merged themselves back together. Put a screen inner cover on top, put our lid and then let these girls settle in because they're, they're probably a little bit disoriented and they want to figure out, you know, if this is their new home and if they're going to stay. So hopefully we'll be good uh, tomorrow and we'll check in on them and, uh, and get them going. Okay, so when you look at a colony after a cutout, you can see where we frame the brood up. The bees in only a few days have reattached the comb to the top of this and the bottom of this to secure it, which is what they will do. And then they will chew those rubber bands and drag them out of the hive. So they're in the way right now, but it's stabilizing the comb until they've stabilized it. And then they will chew them and throw them out of the hive, which is kind of cool. If we continue to look at our colony that we rescued, they look like they've already gotten some work done. Okay, so just doing a quick check and look what we found. We've got a queen. Fantastic. Very excited about that. That's going to be a good, good queen. All right, let's put her back in the box. Here's a frame with drawn comb already on it. And on this side, we have eggs in the middle. I saw our queen on here a few minutes ago. She's wandering about, so that's a good thing. There you have it. So uh, we saved the colony, uh, rescued it out of someone's home cavity, and brought it back here to our apiary where we can manage it. Let's put it back together. Well, that's a wrap. Another successful bee removal here at Bohemia Apiary on the eastern shore of Maryland, where we were able to rescue a colony of bees, a young colony of bees, but starting to be established in uh, the cavity of that, that house. Uh, the homeowner's happy. Uh, we have a, a good, strong colony with a good volume of bees. 
uh, and a queen, a mated queen, because we did see on a few frames uh, eggs where she already started to lay a few days later, and they were already drawing out comb. So that's great, good, strong colony. The, the brood was being reattached. Uh, so again, they'll, they'll fix that hive uh, where they want to have it, and um, we'll continue to grow that colony through the summer and uh, hopefully overwinter them and add them to our, our apiary stock. So another good uh, addition. Uh, appreciate everyone, wa everyone watching and following along. Uh, hopefully we can um, continue to do more of these videos. We've got a couple videos lined up that we need to follow up on. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It alerts you and hit the alerts button so you know when we do another video or we do a follow-up video to one you may be following, whether it be ones that we've done in the past that have some part twos to them. We're coming up on harvest, so we'll have some harvest videos coming in as well. So again, make sure you follow along and, and see when we do the various things in, in the apiary that, that interest you um, as a non-beekeeper. Um, or even, a, a, even a, a beekeeper that's just following along and seeing how we're doing here at Bohemia Apiary. So we'll always love the feedback. Make sure you comment below, hit the like button, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe as well. And if you get a chance and you want to help support us, there's definitely that heart down there. We really appreciate that. Uh, we're very thankful for all the support we have, um, even if it's non-monetary. But that heart button does help us to continue the work we do here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland and helping to save the bees so make sure you, um, if, you if you're able to, uh, and do that level of support, we really do appreciate it. So thanks for everyone watching here at Bohemia Apiary, where remember, beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go home.